Welcome to Autogefühl with Thomas and welcome to a full tour of the Mercedes CLA, today S Coupe, the exterior, interior and the driving experience today with the turbo petrol engine of the CLA 220. And of course everything as you know in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front you can already see this very central design of this Mercedes CLA and that's also the main selling point, the design. However, the predecessor generation to me looked a little bit more fluent and central in design. This one here a little bit more mainstream, but I think still good looking. Headlamps start from Halogen. Yeah, I think they should work on their extra equipment list, so to include more for the customer. Optional LED and optional optional, the LED multi-beam and also for more high beam functionality. Oh, that was a Porsche, I think. So then here, those black elements, those are closed. This is, you know, nothing special then. However, I really like this dot style grille in the AMG line we have here today. So this is my favorite Mercedes front grille. And this white color will especially play a role when we take a look at the interior color very soon. The length is at 4 meters 69, 15 foot 4 or 184 inches. That's 5 centimeters longer than the predecessor and 15 centimeters longer than the Mercedes A-Class sedan because nowadays they have the A-Class sedan, which is on the same platform than this one, the Mercedes CLA. And then there is the Mercedes C-Class. And that is at the same length than this one. This one even 2 millimeters longer. Why? <laughs> so that doesn't make too much sense to me. Well, it is how it is. And the design, well, that's not a Porsche, it's a Jaguar F-Type. I think a V6, but that one already has a good sound. So the uh, roof line right there, pretty central. Here again with this typical CLA ending, coupe style, four door, of course, also frameless doors. That's also special with this car. So yes, still a very central choice. The biggest wheels are those 19 inch, optional, also AMG style, I think, Will they still work? Well, we have the adaptive suspension here. There's base suspension, 15 millimeters lower sports fixed suspension, and then adaptive suspension. We have the adaptive one today, which is also the best, definitely. We'll tell you more about the Comfort if it still works with the biggest wheels. And of course, then, you know, panoramic roof available also in need today, and strong shoulders in this part, but everything with a round design, that's also what they're doing at the moment at Mercedes. 16 inch would be the base wheel size, by the way, if you're interested. And well, this three quarter rear perspective is yeah, something very special with this car. It's also where the designers pay special attention to and it indeed looks like a raindrop from the rear. It's, you know, seamlessly integrated the whole design also as the tail lamps are laid out. So I think that's also what making this CLA special. And then you can maybe understand that there's still some differentiation to an A-Class sedan and also to a Mercedes C-Class. CLA 220, that's the engine for today. Which one it is exactly? I'll tell you more on the engine part very soon. And for Matic, this one is also available with the all-wheel drive. That's always front plus rear on demand. One design flaw there is, we all agree on that fake exhaust tips here and they are pure fake. This is just pure cosmetic and there's nothing on the inside. The exhaust underneath, they do that nowadays, for, you know, for packaging reasons, for that they can put the particle filter some, somewhere, that they can also maintain a same design on the rear, no matter of the engine, but come on, then just leave out the fake exhaust tip, make it with a nice chrome line here and that's it and it will be as beautiful designers. Or oh, what's your take on that? Yeah, and since this one here is a design object, it also gets one more perspective here, straight 90 degrees from the rear. So, do you like the design overall? Let's discuss it in the comments. Now to engines. The CLA, by the way, also built in Hungary. Then 180D, 1.5 liter, 116 horsepower, 200D, 2 liter, 150 horsepower, 220D, 2 liter, 190 horsepower, all front wheel drive. And then the petrol side, CLA 180, 1.4 liter with 136, CLA 200, 1.4 liter, 163, 
The small ones are the Renault engines and the 2 liter ones, diesel and petrol, are Mercedes. Like this one, the CLA 220, 2 liter 4 cylinder engine, 190 horsepower, optional with all wheel drive, like we have here today. Acceleration figure here is about 7 seconds. Then there's the CLA 250, 2 liter 4 cylinder, 225 horsepower, had that last time, 6.3 seconds. And then, of course, the very strong ones, the AMGs. The 35 AMG, that one then with 306 horsepower, and the 45 MPG, MPG, <laughs> the 45 AMG with 387 horsepower or 421 horsepower, and the 45 S. Whew, that's a little much for this displacement, but I think the one we have here today is actually quite decent as for this perspective. Oh, that's hot, can't touch this. Mm -hmm. And now to this interior, which has soft touch leatherette at the inside of the doors, up and also in the lower part, and this special trim with the wide contrast. And this feels so soft. I had this one, uh, you know, one sh uh, short story with a Mercedes official saying, like, mm, is this really leatherette? Oh, now the MBUX already, like MBUX reacts on Mercedes. So he was touching it, like, nah, that's the real animal skin. I say, like, no, are you really sure about this? And then he checked it up and said, like, Oh, you're actually right. This one is our high-class leatherette. Amazing how far we've gone. So they couldn't believe it themselves. Then here, this is a matte wood trim. Also very beautiful. This combination is really cool. Memory seating here for the electric seats. And here, this one even has seat cooling and seat and heating. <laughs> the MBUX goes all over the place while I'm talking about Mercedes. And well, the seat cooling does belong to those seats here. And you have base seats, you have sport seats, as we can see it right now with the integrated head restraint. And you have so many different seating choices and most of them are actually sustainable and animal friendly. That's really cool. We have, for example, a fabric brace seat. So um, the cloth basic. Then there is a mix of fabric on the inside and this leatherette, Artico or MBTEX are the brand names, depending on the country on the outside. Then there's also Dynamica microfiber and an AMG line on the inside. And this one here at the outside. And then there's also like this full Artico or full MBTEX available for the whole seat if you want this um, slick animal skin look, but yet again, want to combine lux luxurious um, interior with being more animal friendly. And this is also the case here. So this one is not animal sourced, although it 100% looks like it and it feels so hard, high class, so soft, even with the optional perforation. So you can get this seat here without the perforation as a base. And if you go for the option, it's about even yeah, well, more, more than a thousand euros extra. This perforation is an option for the seat cooling. And this is the, one of the very, very rare occasions where we find a leatherette seat with a seat cooling. Mercedes and Tesla, they both offer that. I think no one else at the moment. If you know someone else, then please tell me in the comments. And that's what I'm talking about. When people want to combine luxury and sustainability, that's a good example for that. Then steering wheel is also available in different forms. If you want that animal free, the base one is actually for the CLA. Then this one at the moment is animal skin, but you can also get the other one if you like. And you can also get one with microfiber, better dry grip on the side or one also with total microfiber. But I'm not sure if you can only get it for the AMG, but also for others. Gonna talk to your dealer for that because this one is already the sporty form, but not the sportiest. <laughs> Always when I talk about Mercedes, the MBUX uh, voice recognition gets activated. I'll soon show you more about that. But definitely, I mean, this first look, so impressive what they've done here in a compact platform car with the interior.
getting inside is fairly easy and you have a quite sporty seating position indeed so yeah and this also feels more like compact size vehicle also in the space in the front so in the mid-size segment although this one's the same length than the c-class i think you have a little bit more space um, and a little more seating area however you have about five centimeter more shoulder room than in the predecessor CLA because remember the whole car the whole track is also five centimeters wider and that also transfers to the interior so better than in the previous generation seat here has the electric adjustment on the inside of the doors I can do that well at the moment and the steering wheel yeah with the manual adjustment but very smooth process and also you know very well adjustable so that's pretty cool with one meters 86 or six foot one that leaves me hardly any headroom right there so I could can put the hand over my head barely with this panoramic roof if you don't go for go for that one um, you can have a little bit more headroom if you like so I mean it's decent and you can also sustain mode longer motorway rides definitely but for me as a tall person um, I think I sit a little bit more comfortable in the c-class um, yeah or for example in the Mercedes SUV but then again if you're a little bit smaller that won't be such an issue and I want to show you one cool trick already. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help you? Open the sunroof. I'm opening the roller sun blind on the sliding sunroof. Yeah, magic. But for the real opening, for security reasons, you have to then do it yourself. And that is right here. And then you have some fresh air right there. Now look at that, that really has still a wow factor here also on the other A-Class um, cars. You would start with 7-inch screens on both sides, optional then the, the bigger one 10.25 on the right side and optional, optional 2 times 10.25 inch and then you have this going through um, design so that looks pretty fancy. Also then those you know, round vents here, they are design highlight. This is black panel like I don't like it that much but cool for example this um, perforated structure right here on the right part. Then again matte wood is being used right there, high class and leatherette on top of the dashboard. So the build quality again fantastic. Shifting pedals if you like it but the dual clutch transmission usually does all the good job. Left side with your thumb here you can use this small black pad and then control the instruments right there on the right so you can also use your right thumb then to control the central infotainment screen but also via touch and the third thing would be using the lower trackpad so redundant controls however you prefer it why not climate unit nice clicking sound and you know still very well reachable um, this one is also quite well aligned as for the buttons sometimes they don't align those button um, this button line that that well in the very lower part you have an inductive charging pad next to a USB-C supply for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection then you have those cup holes they can also flip out and you know be a little bit more adaptive the, um, the touchpad here with the driving modes on the left side volume on the right side and also some hotkeys for example and then you also have this flipping out middle console and then some space underneath two USB um, charging points just for charging not for connecting and those digital instruments as i said you can switch them around a little bit that's always nice to show you here in styles and display for example you can also switch to a sports gauge so you have pretty flexible as for that um, you always have to go back to the main menu then for that however that's maybe a little bit annoying or here the progressive is also pretty clean and nice um, yeah but i mean i really like this blue style however but you can also go for the understated that's done really minimalistic but i think you know um, yeah here and on the right side you can also switch to those and then switch what's being displayed just on the left or on the right so really flexible as for that a lot of adjustments are possible but i think that's uh, maybe you know you find one setup and then just stick with it and you can also have your gps information right there in the middle they made big progress as for the head-up display projected into the windscreen that's an option at mercedes of course as most of the stuff is an option and here the allowed speed can be displayed there the current speed and also gps information so i already gave you an mbux example for the sunroof and here for example you can also do like um hey mercedes Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? Please drive me to Berlin. I am
confirm starting route guidance to Ebertstrasse, Berlin. So using um, it for um, the GPS input, for example, quite frequently. So that's working very well or for weather or even changing the temperature that all works. And again, touch screen control that is possible browsing through the main menu. So when I connect my phone, there it is. This is also now with the new iOS, which has a little bit different layout than here now of the CarPlay. Um, also here with direct um, map access and this optional sound system here has um, really good sound, um, nice surround sound. Can just recommend it um, if you want that. So really very nicely done also for this segment right there. And Android Auto is of course also working. You can always get back to this home screen right there. And this comfort feature, by the way, energizing comfort, so the seat kinetics, they adjust the seat a little bit so you have some variation while driving that's i think a nice idea and one more close-up for the gps i also want to show you and i can for example also just press the hotkey in the lower console to get to the map again so here you can zoom in and out and the cpu is actually also quite powerful so that works but it could be a little bit more responsive it always depends a little bit on the web connection as well and what about the rear view camera the right there great resolution you also have this fake drone view from above and then also those adjusting helping lines that's also pretty cool and you can also switch it around this one here also has the front view camera for example so you're pretty flexible here too and here even to see the uh, alloys right and left yeah with 19 inch that can be quite helpful and this is, by the way, the automatic shifting lever. So put it down for the drive mode, up for the reverse, and right press for parking mode. Hmm, but couldn't they include a frameless mirror here in this so elegant and high-class vehicle? We even had it in the Mazda 3, where most of the stuff were, you know, you know, were standard and was half the money of this car. So, yeah, put a more elegant back mirror in here. Soft touch leather red also at the rear doors, both in the black and the white scheme. So this is high class build quality. The build quality of this car is really amazing, but of course the price is also high. Yeah, it's not the best package overall, but it's a huge improvement if you compare it to the predecessor. Yes, the car is also longer, so that's no wonder. So you can see I do fit here as you know, another tall adult. Headroom wise, it starts to get here uh, very close with the ceiling. So. I am a little bit cramped in here, definitely. The shooting brake will have a little bit more headroom, yes. And it's also a little bit better if you think about the Mercedes C-Class sedan, for example. Um, yeah, that's the thing. So not the best package, but you can also drive it with four taller adults with some limitations, definitely. Those very beautiful sport seats are, of course, also a little bit more, you know, voluminous right there. You can you can see it, you know, how, um, how far they reach the back. And from the rear here, you also have a nice view to this panoramic roof. This is also pretty cool. And then you have Isofix at the outside of the seats and in the middle console you have two more USB-C supplies. So you open the trunk by flipping the logo, that's quite cool. And then here we are. And the leader figures here, by the way, 370 for the A-Class hatch, 420 for the A-Class sedan, 460 here for the CLA. You have more length in trunk here, of course, than with the A-Class sedan, for example. And you can see here, this cabin trolley here can be slid forward and backward, and even it fits in the vertical way because the height right there is about 50 centimeters, and the width in the front is more than a meter. And if we go more to the rear, you can see, um, I mean, here in the very front, it's wider, but it's even a little bit wider than a meter if you go a little bit deeper in. So that's actually quite good. And the normal trunk length is about one meters and 10. Then we can release those seats right there, put the bag out as well. And if I go around and flip those seats, you can see here, one third, two third. Um, but the thing is here, look at that. <laughs> I cannot push them all the way through because for that, the front seats need to need to be in a position where tall drivers cannot drive that properly. So now I, I adjust it a little bit and I squeeze them down. There we are. And then we are at one meters 80 in length. And that's actually quite decent. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Mercedes CLA Coupe, this time as a CLA 220. And last time we've been driving the 250, the CLA 250, and they both have the same 2-liter turbo petrol engine, 4-cylinder, 
It's just the horsepower difference. The 250 has 225 horsepower. Yeah, how does that, does that make sense? I don't know. <laughs> and the 220 has 190 horsepower. Why can't they just name the models after the horsepower range or the exact displacement figure like it was used to be, like there was the Sense? Same goes for Audi, BMW and everyone, you know. The naming doesn't make sense anymore and I think that's quite sad. There are like very few manufacturers who still have a, like a, you know, useful name. Oh, Jaguar Land Rover, well, they reintroduced a useful naming. We're saying like P300 and that is also 300 horsepower, for example. So that makes sense for the customer, I think. And also for car reviews, because we also get confused by the namings, definitely. But thing is, this one here is the true Mercedes engine. So there's very small petrol ones, the Renault, also for the smallest diesel, it's also Renault. And then the, all the two liter displacement engines here in the CLA and also the A-Class, they are true Mercedes engines. And I mean, you can always argue, of course, a smaller engine would be enough for this car, yes. But yet again, and I'm not saying like that French engine is worse than the German one or something. So that's, I mean, who could really prove that? That's really hard to say, um, in a, you know, cannot generalize. But what I, you know, can understand is that when you buy a Mercedes, you probably also want to have German engine, just, you know, as a fitting combination. I mean, they have, must have thought of something here. And it must have been the reason why they said, it's not making sense for us to develop the small engines ourselves anymore. Yeah, that's about it. So, and since this one here also is all-wheel drive, you can also take some comments on that. And both of those, actually the 220 and the 250 CLA, are optionally available with all-wheel drive. The 35 MG and the 45 MG are always all-wheel drive, so front plus rear here on demand. So, um, and you don't have to go for it. Also, it does not change the acceleration figure. So this car driving here right now is about seven seconds, zero to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And the 250 is about 6.3 seconds. So there's like more than half a second acceleration difference. But yet again, I always say, when you have a choice for a car, get the one with the biggest displacement, but with the lowest horsepower output. That's the more, you know, that's um, the best durability for the engine, you know, that it's, you have the displacement, which is like the basic character for the engine and more displacement does not mean higher consumption. Sometimes it's the other way around. I told you also last time in the Master 3 review that this downsizing trend is just something that is done due to the lack of regulations and not because it makes sense. And yet again, we do favor engines that are more economical, definitely, of course. And when it's not tuned up to the most horsepower, like, you know, in the 45, I mean, like, uh, getting like those 400 horsepower plus from a two liter engine, Nah, I don't know. What about you? So I think it makes more sense in the more also, you know, if you think long term, to get a reasonable power output out of a reasonable displacement. And I think that's the case here with this very engine, two liter of displacement and 190 horsepower. So if you ask me for this very vehicle, I would probably end up buying exactly this engine. And I think the difference is also not too big to the 250. Yeah, I mean, you have this little bit different horsepower tune. And if you read Accelerate 0 to 100, you will notice it. But in most of the situations, it doesn't make too much of a difference. So you can also save some money and stick with the 220. Also, if you ask me all-wheel drive, yes or no, I would probably say, yeah, I mean, it also doesn't make too much of a difference because when you pick the all-wheel drive, there is no difference in acceleration figure, and the reason for that is high, you know, high horsepower performance cars. When they have either front wheel or rear wheel drive, or even just rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, then it does make a difference because it's about traction, you know, the grip the tires have. And but this power region here with 190 horsepower is not a region uh, where it's about that you need more grip at the other axle. So you can bring all the power to the ground with this 190 horsepower even just rear the front wheels. And in most situations, you won't feel a difference. And even if you have the all-wheel drive, it's front plus rear, so also some 
torque than on the rear wheels. However, it doesn't change the basic driving, driving characteristic. It will still be front wheel biased. And this is also a difference, for example, to the Mercedes C-Class, which has the rear wheel driven platform. So, about that acceleration, 50 kilometers to 100, let's go. That's it. And I think that's definitely reasonable and also right sized for this car. You see I was in sport mode and we got also a little bit more here from the engine. I think for a two liter four cylinder, the sound was quite decent here on the interior. What's your take on that? Then if you want to relax more, we can put it back to comfort mode. We can set the adaptive cruise control right here on the left side, which is a useful option, the Distronic, how they call it. The distance to the car in front of me is being kept. And here at 1 km, so it's about 60 miles an hour, perfect noise insulation. This car is so silent here for this compact segment. And also at higher speeds, you know, in the um, CLA 250 review, we also had like maxed it out on the motorway. So compare that if you like. At a later stage, we also have a different color there and some different landscapes surrounding, always enjoyable to watch. And there they also, you know, had a very good noise snitch even at the very high speeds. So also um, it has a good um, wind, you know, coefficient. So it's, you know, really stands well in the wind as for the aerodynamics. It also helps with noise insulation. So you really feel at home on the motorway, although it's a compact vehicle. At some point when you're tall as me, then you do have a little bit more comfort in either SUV style cars when you sit more upright or then also in a segment above, so a mid-size segment would be above. However, I told you earlier, size-wise, this is mid-size. However, I sometimes find the seats in the C-Class maybe a little bit more comfortable, but just a little bit. But also, in general, not with Mercedes. So, um, tall people will feel a little bit more at home in a Volvo, for example, or in a Volkswagen than in the Mercedes. But if you're not as tall as me, it won't be such a problem. So, definitely also great motorway. Then back to the sports mode, we're going to this roundabout, see how the steering also reacts, and as for the suspension, which is the optional adaptive suspension here today. Here, um, I would like if I would steer maybe a little bit less here, but it's still okay, natural driving feeling, get out. The suspension gives me enough feedback here in the sports mode. Wow, nice accelerating out of the corner. Although I do missing a punch from the rear, definitely, so that would be better in a Mercedes C-Class, where you accelerate out of the corners with a little rear torque, of course, rear wheel base bias, even if you have the all-wheel drive, and that gives you, you know, better drive out of the corners. However, the driving handling here is really nice. So you feel the car is light, compact, very well to handle. You're in perfect control all the time. So that is very well balanced, very well done. And you don't necessarily need an AMG version, because here when you're in the sport mode, you still have a good compromise for the adaptive suspension that you have sport and comfort at the same time. When you go to the comfort mode and just have like a longer motorway ride, you can have even more dampening comfort. So I, was, I would always go here either with the base suspension, if you want to save some money, if you don't want to spend so much money on the CLA, or then if you, you know, tend to invest a little bit more in this car, then go for the adaptive suspension not for the fixed sport suspension um, because most people I think might want to enjoy this you know this uh, mix of comfort and, and sportiness for that instruments are also clear to read but may, most of the time I'm looking at the head-up display anyway so yeah the steering could be a little bit more progressive that's always what we say when driving the Mercedes cars um, you have to steer a little bit more yet again then it doesn't appear like it would be an arcade feeling so then the steering feel is a little bit more natural so overall it's definitely nice the assistance systems work very well maybe you um, at some point also saw the red triangle flashing there in the side mirrors for the blind spot monitor let's see maybe where i can put myself right next to the car there then let me overtake again sports mode. i wonder that in sports mode the um, start stop function is not deactivated immediately that's um that's strange those transporters quite often accelerate really hard. So, let's see, now I put myself in the front again and probably the transporter would like to overtake me once again. Or maybe someone is coming from behind. No. No. 
come on, we're in a demo of a Linesman monitor here, guys. But this time, <laughs> no one wants to overtake me. Okay. Well, but maybe you've, you've already seen it on the motorway at some point with the, with the you know, that we will do this red triangle in the side mirrors. So that's definitely very helpful. And again, assistance systems, they all work very flawlessly. Uh, what we can still try is, you know, here keeping me in the lane. See here, the car is steering actively. But then again, seeing that, don't trust in it 100%. Because you've seen there, the line was a little bit dissolving into the green and the car wasn't realizing that that much. So on the motorway, that is working very flawlessly. Also here, now he wants hands on the steering wheel. Here that was a clear line on the, on the left. But then again, yeah, now the line is actually quite clear. So here, now it's keeping me in the, in the inside. But again, the car does have to, does the, the have the urge to see the right lines. And if not, oh, that's an old Olimac. Interesting. So then, you know, was just an example. You're still responsible, you know, with those level two assistance systems. And this is, you know, the lane keeping assist when you have the ACC set. So there's also this other assistance system that when you don't have the ACC set and when you tend to get um, off the road, then there is this braking intervention. Uh, intervention, And that's something um, I don't like that much. So let's see if we can induce that. So for example here, when I'm now, there's a line and I try to get off the road. See here, no, it wasn't setting in. Yeah, it's probably also more on the motorway, but we've experienced it before that the car then uses braking intervention, not steering intervention, to get you back in the lane. And that's something where you sometimes get like, whoa, <gasps> my heart. So um, I like better, a little, little bit better than with the other manufacturers who do it with the steering intervention like this car does when you have the ACC set. Yeah. So power-wise, again, you definitely have enough. This one should be the engine to go for. You can have fun. But yet again, you can also let it just roll and drive slowly. Um, as for the fuel economy, you can, of course, um, when, you, when you really hammer it, then it's quite sensitive to um, hammering the throttle, this engine, definitely. Um, but if you keep it steady and calm, you can also score something around 7 liters on 100 kilometers. So around 30 mpg US and about around 40 mpg UK. Mm, depending on the driving situations, if you, you know, use it more in the city or you hammer it a little bit more, then it will rather be more than 7 liters or then less than 30 mpg US or less than 40 mpg UK. So fuel consumption is not the best with this engine. That was, for example, better, better with the um, Master, uh, Master 3 we've recently been testing. But we cannot compare the performance that much. I mean, even like to the uh, to this one here, it's about seven seconds, and the Sky Active X in the Master 3 was about 8.5 seconds in acceleration, so definitely slower. Here, of course, you also have the turbo, which sets in and gives you a good boost. On the one hand, I like the naturally aspirated engines because they have a linear power output. On the other hand, this turbo gives you some more comfort in everyday driving life because if you see, oh, there's like a motorway, you need to do an acceleration overtaking of a truck or something, then you always have the turbo power, just floor it out, don't pick the driving mode first or so, and yeah, and, and you'll be just fine. The automatic gearboxes they're using here in the compact models, by the way, are dual clutch transmissions and they are really flawless and there are hardly any transitions between the gears, you hardly feel it. Of course, when you're in a sport mode and accelerate a little bit harder, then it's also intended that you feel that the gear is being changed. Other than that, they try to keep it rather smooth and you don't really realize that it's doing that. Here again, over some bumps and adaptive suspension is evening it out very well. Sometimes, you know, when you also have some rolling, it feels so soft with this adaptive suspension without much body roll, you know? That's, that's interesting that you sometimes think, that's so good, that's maybe, maybe even a little bit air suspension-like, really cool. So, with this good noise insulation and this elaborate interior, dual horizontal screen there, head-up display, cooled seats on the, leather, on the sustainable leatherette surface, then also the soft leatherette here at the inside of the doors where I put my arm here, for example, 
um, the voice input, all those luxury features I have, then this really very comfortable adaptive suspension, you literally feel like being in a small S-Class. And I think that's definitely a big compliment for a compact size vehicle. The limitations again are somewhat the seating space, so that bone will not be an issue if you're smaller than me. If you're as tall or taller than me, then it might, it might make sense to think about, yeah, take a test ride either in a C-Class, see if the comfort is a little bit better for you then, or maybe then in the um, you know, counterpart SUV, which would, I mean, platform-wise also here, like a Mercedes GLB, the new one. Yeah, of course, it doesn't look as fancy at this one, so that might not be a competition project for you. But seating-wise, it will be more comfortable, for example. Um, so always when you have you know lower back problems the SUVs can make sense and you know there is this big SUV discussion at the moment especially in Germany saying like SUV are the evil cars and nothing else but the thing is if you think about most SUVs that are bought at the moment are small and compact SUVs and SUVs also quite often on the very same traffic space have more interior legroom for example where you can drive with more people and also the consumption due to the other building form is quite often only like half a liter more on one kilometer or something. So it's not that much of a difference. I think we rather have to talk about, you know, like the length of the vehicle, which like which traffic space are you taking and how many people are inside? Does it make sense? Or maybe like tax cars after the overall length, for example, you know, but you know, we cannot say like, you know, SUV is evil and the sedan not. Well, I mean, that doesn't make, doesn't make any sense. That's just this, you know, this emotionally written discussion, you know, with some good thoughts, you know, for environment and people's safety, but it's without any, you know, knowledge how the car market is working. So back to this car here, which is, yeah, definitely a sedan. We can say it's calling it Coupe is marketing. Yes, definitely. It is the official name, so we also use it and also to differentiate it, Coupe versus Shooting Brake. They will drive the very same, by the way, so you don't feel if you're driving the Coupe or the Shooting Brake. Same length, same wheelbase and so on. Same car, it's just that the rear trunk build is a little bit different. But here, I mean, such a flawless driving feeling. Again, for tall people, it could be a little bit more comfortable as for this, you know, seating space you have available. That's maybe the, the only thing I can, you know, find negative about this vehicle. Yet again, I'm so happy about those high-class sustainable leather red seats, which are also cooled. Um, this is really amazing, for example, and all of the comfort features I have here. So this is probably the compact vehicle that feels the most elaborate, the most exclusive, the most high-class, both exterior design and especially when you sit here on the interior. So it is super expensive, yes starting at about, you know, 30 something K in Germany with a base model. And then the AMG models, of course, double or more than double the price. But even this year, 220, you can easily get past 50 or 60,000 euros. So um, you, can, you can also double the price with a non-AMG model with all those extras. So that's the biggest downside of this car is the price. The pricing is, yeah, from time to time, quite ridiculous already on this car. <laughs> Maybe just that some other cars are even worse in pricing at Mercedes. So you pay for the other cars even more. So that's maybe the only thing that is, um, you know, getting us back to, to, to the CLA. But at least if you compare it to some other expensive vehicles, when you drive this one, you really believe it's an expensive car. You know, you can, you can get it. Maybe also, you know, explain why. So, you know that collects your thoughts maybe a little bit more again. So overall, a very impressive ride for a compact size, yeah, compact platform vehicle. Yet again, we have to remind us always that the length is already mid-size. Yeah, pretty interesting this concept. I'm really looking uh, forward then to compare it very soon to the um, BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe when that one comes out. And now to our conclusion for today with the new generation of the Mercedes CLA and driving the CLA 220. Well, exterior, it has been 
you know, changed a little bit. Definitely it's, let's say, not as central and as unique as before, I think. The first generation was, you know, a little bit more screaming out, but maybe now also a little bit more likable. On the other hand, I think it's also a matter of preference. Definitely it still has this design focus that it differentiates to the A-Class sedan and the Mercedes C-Class. However, in length, Hmm, yeah, it's longer than the A-Class sedan, but the same length as the Mercedes C-Class, so I'm not really sure if that's making any sense. On the interior, of then, of course, more room than before, especially on the rear seats. And you still somehow feel this A-Class compact platform, yes, so for taller people, that can be one thing to move to another vehicle. Other than that, if you think about other Mercedes cars, this compact platform car, although it's mid-size and length, yeah, still or already offers everything you might want to imagine like you know the cool seats and even in combination you know with a lot of different animal friendly materials which is superb in this car the central layout and the interior also the voice input so many things are really top notch and top of the segment so that's really well done also driving wise that was fantastic sound insulation was great this engine we tested here today is also probably the one we should go for yeah consumption could be a little bit less that's not top notch but still in a you know normal or reasonable way somewhat to say and adaptive suspension is just fantastic here such an elaborate driving feeling told you at the end of the driving part this is driving a small mercedes s-class already here in the cla yeah and then it's very very expensive yeah like 50 or then at some point 60k for a size of that one hmm. but yet again half the price of an s-class <laughs> so that's probably also the conclusion for today thank you so much for tuning in to this review hope you also check out our other mercedes cla review and also the performance versions of the A-Class, so different reviews you can all check out or compare it to a Mercedes C-Class if you're interested in that. And definitely tune in to our very next review. Please subscribe if you haven't done so far. See you next time.